Welcome back everybody, we have another magic video for y'all today. Today we're going over about seven cards from each set that has come out so far this year. We're just going to go over some cards that I like, that I'm using in decks, that I just kind of pulled from my trade binder because I have extras of them, things like that. Uh, we're just going to go over them, talk about them, situations that I'm using them in. And it's only sets from this year. So Kamigawa, Streets of Nikopena, and Commander's Legends, Baldur's Gate. So, starting with the first release of the year, Kamigawa. Uh, seven cards that I have here with me. We're going to start at the top with Farewell. Uh, four and two whites for the sorcery speed. Uh, choose one or more XL artifacts, XL creatures, XL enchantments, XL graveyards. I feel like this is a really great card to have in any white deck because you get the flexibility to choose what you want to do with it. If you're playing a heavy artifact deck, you just XL all those. Heavy creature deck, token deck. X all of those, Chamas, Graveyard Recursion, it just hits all the all the pieces. Um, I have it in all my white decks now. I think it should be a, a pretty decent staple at this point, and I don't think it's that expensive either. It's a really fun card to play. It's really just very like like diverse, and you can use it in a lot of ways. Uh, next we got Cura, the Boundless Sky. Um, I like this dragon cycle of the dragon spirits that was in Kamigawa. I have a lot of them in my decks. Uh, Kira's one of my favorite, though. Three and two green for a 4-4 flying death touch dragon. And then when Kira dies, uh, you choose one search life for up to three land cards with them. Put them into your hand and shuffle. Create an XX green spirit creature token where X is number land control. So you're in green. The spirit creature is probably pretty good. Probably have a lot of lands out in green. Uh, but my favorite thing is that it's a flying death touch. I feel like we see that a lot now in Commander. You get a lot of flyers. You get a lot of things that just want to fly over you. Having something with death touch that's flying is so good. Like, I love having this card. I'm using it in, I think, two decks right now. I have different copies of this in those decks. It's a really fun card. I really enjoy using it. And uh, it's something that's just fun out of, out, out of Kamigawa. Definitely recommend getting this one as well next up we have kira i not kira we just went through kira we have atsushi the blazing sky two and two red legendary creature dragon spirit four four flying trampler uh when atsushi dies you choose one exile top two cards your library to the end of your next turn you may play those cards or create three treasure tokens a really good situ situational card as well the 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 thing that I like about these dragons is, is that you want them to die, so they're really fun cards to play because they're good to you live, but they also have that great like death effect as well. Um, the exile top two cards your library, you know, end game or mid game, you need some more card fodder, you get to exile them and play them until your next turn. That's so good, but also if you're kind of early, you want them extra mana. The three treasures are also good as well, especially if you're in red, you have potential access to like gold span dockside uh prosper so it's a lot of flexibility with atsushi i like him as well also be be on the lookout for a, a lot of these cards that i'm talking about today because a lot of them are pretty cheap now as everyone gets ready for the push to like double masters so a lot of these cards are dropping in price uh there's a few that i picked up for really really cheap that i plan on getting multiple copies of and the dragon cycle from kamigawa is of course some of those that i'm picking up right now uh, next up is Satoru Umezawa. One, a blue and a black for a 2-4 human ninja. Uh, whenever you activate an Ninjutsu ability, the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the rest in the bottom of your, li of your library in any order. This ability triggers only once each turn. But the big thing is each creature card in your hand has, nin has Ninjutsu 2 black blue. Um, I've seen someone get killed with the Blight still on turn four with this. Absolutely insane. It's a really funny card to see. It's very situational, though. I don't think it's that strong, but I think people see it as a kind of kill on sight kind of thing. I mean, when you when you can get Blight Steel turn four, it's it's pretty funny to see. And this card's really cheap too. It was cheap when it came out. It's gonna be cheap now. I recommend picking up copies of this if you think the ninjutsu route with non like ninja or ninjutsu creatures is what you want to do. I uh, definitely recommend picking this one, this one up as well. Uh, next up is Jenga Texas 
progress tyrant five and two blue y'all can probably see what's coming up next but let's focus here on Jin. uh legendary creature phyrexian and prayer tier five five whenever you cast an artifact instant or sorcery spell copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy so ability triggers only once each turn and then whenever an opponent casts an artifact instant or sorcery spell counter that spell so ability triggers only once each turn so it's an on field counter spell the first thing gets played each turn and at the same time you get to copy your stuff that you're playing whether it's an artifact instant or sorcery a uh, really strong card it has really fallen i remember seeing a video uh either to earlier today or uh over the weekend of Jin, of jenga taxes price at around launch being around like 45 to 50 dollars and this one I picked up for 10 bucks. So I really recommend picking these up. I think they will only go up in value, especially once the whole like double masters hype dies down and everyone starts to get their pieces. They're gonna start to look at the older stuff that they still need to fill out their decks. And I think Jen will be one of the, will be one of those pieces in blue decks that people will most likely kind of go back to. So for 10 bucks, I think it's a good solid pickup definitely recommend getting these if you if you see them at your local lgs's if you see them in people's trade binders take advantage pick them up they're re it's a really fun card to use it there's a lot of high cmc stuff in here but i like playing high cost stuff it's just fun magic uh next up kaito shizuki one a blue and a black very legendary planeswalker and then has at the, at the beginning of your end step if kaito shizuki entered the battle for this turn he phases out i like this card because it's a planeswalker that gets protection the first cycle around just so good that's such a good effect you can you can plus them instantly or you down take them make the ninja that, that, that's unblockable but um i really like the the free draw card if you play this in your second main it's a really fun thing then it phases out you're at four loyalty at that point you can make stuff that's unblockable and if you get the ult off it is seven tick down you get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals common damage to a player search your library for your blue or black creature cards put it onto the battlefield and shuffle so if you somehow get to ult this off it's a free tutor as long as you hit for combat damage so really fun thing to use um and then now on to our last one the wandering emperor this is the showcase art this is probably my favorite card to come out this year uh multiple copies of this card not this art but i do have the the regular prince copy of it uh that's your planes walk for two and two white uh she has flash and as long as one enter into the battlefield this turn and you activate her loyalty abilities anytime you'd cast an instant using this in standard has been so much fun on uh, arenas you flash this in on your opponent's turn and you uptick or you down tick it's probably the down tick that's probably the best thing the down tick two xl target type creature you gain two life people are attacking you you just flash this in x holler thing and you're just kind of like it's just such a good thing and then with the with the uptick of of the plus one plus one counter and the first strike like it's a really fun card to use i really enjoy it great art great story for it it has a long-term story um she just has like my favorite lore from this year so far so that's why she's my number one card from kamigawa that's why she's my number one card in my trade minder. Like, I would have never trade this version of the card just because like, I just love this artwork. Um, so yeah, I do know the other copies over have kind of risen up though towards 30 bucks for the base copy. But if it does kind of spike down due to the demand of double masters and people trying to get rid of stuff, definitely recommend picking these up. I think they will go up in price for sure. Uh, moving on to the next set is Nuka Penna. So Nuka Penna, we're gonna do three right here that are all from the Commander deck, the Obscura Operation. So Tevet, Seller of Secrets, is one of the secondary commanders in the deck. Three, and Esper for a 6-6 six, six Flying War 3 Sphinx Rogue. Um, it's a very political um, commander that I really like. And I really think it's very situational, but could be a lot of fun if you actually let it play out. Uh, Council's Dilemma. Whenever Tevet enters the battlefield or does come damage to a player, 
starting with you, each player votes for evidence or bribery. For each evidence votes, evidence votes investigate. For each bribery vote, create a charge token. While voting, you may vote an additional time. So, a really fun card, really politicky, and you're in the in the right colors for it: white, blue, and black. Um, I think it's gonna kind of slip on right now, and I do think someone will find a way to break this card easily. Next up are some things that do connive. Uh, first, I'll talk about is the mask of the schemer, artifact equipment for tuna blue, and equip two. Whenever equipped a creature deals common damage to a player, it connives X. Or X is the amount of damage it dealt to that player. This can be really good and get really out of hand very quickly in a deck like Satoru or the bunch of ninja support that's in the deck for like ninjutsu. Because ideally you have stuff that's unblockable. And if you're going to ninjutsu and you have this on and you do combat damage, it can nice extend. This is kind of building off of like the stuff from the like Kamigawa. And if you have stuff that's unblockable, this can get you to draw a lot of stuff, get you to go through your deck pretty quickly. Yes, you're going to discard as well, but typically I think with the amount you'd be drawing, you should kind of get to what you need for the most part. And then last but not least, change of plans. X, 1, and blue. Each of X star creatures you control connive may have any number of them phase out. It's just such a great card. At instant speed for two blue. For one in a blue, and then you choose a number of targets you have. So you put this in like a Hinata, like like Sun, like like Sun Crown deck. This card would be absolutely insane because you're just paying one in a blue then, and you select your targets, and it's pretty much free then. So a uh, change of plan is just so much fun because it's card draw. You pitch stuff that you don't need, or pitch stuff that you can like reanimate or or like recur from your grave, and then you get to phase them out. It's, it's just so good. Like, you leave yourself open because you can't phase out. But you phase out your important stuff in case of board wipes and things like that. And you draw cards. Really good card. Really good deck. Obscura Operation was. I really enjoyed it. It's been pieced out into other decks for me. But I do want to pick up another one. Just to kind of tinker with, like, Kamiz as the main commander. And see how things go with it. So, these three are three of my favorites from the commander deck. I'm now going over my other four. We have right here, uh, starting out with one Esper for Quasar, Augur of Agonies. For a Cephal Advisor 3 4. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, pretty simple. You draw cards in the deck with this. I do have a Commander deck built around this card. I have the alternate art for it though, the um, Etched Foil or Good Foil, whichever one's called the, for, the, for the set. Uh, really fun though to just take opponents. And really, all you, all you have to do is draw cards. So, really fun card. I really enjoy it. One of my favorite commanders for this year. Next up, the Fire Action Praetor from Streets of Nukapena. Or Brask Heretic Praetor. 3 and 2 red for a 4-4 four, four, uh, legendary creature Fire Action Praetor. With haste at, at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile top card of your library you may play it this turn. At the beginning of your, each opponent's upkeep. The next time they would draw a card this turn, instead they exile to a card library, they may play it this turn. So, essentially what this does is you get two cards during your turn, essentially, because you exile at the extra upkeep, but you still draw. And then at the end of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card this turn. So, instead of drawing a card, they exile the top card of their library, and they either play it or they lose it that turn. Um, and it's uh, they may play this turn, doesn't say they keep it or anything, so that's what I assume is gonna happen. Uh, it's a really fun card. I like a lot of these Praetors, I like the backstory for them, I like the story of the Praetors. That's why you'll see a lot of them in these videos because I just like big things that do a lot of fun stuff like that. Uh, next up is Jita, Font of Hope, one in white for a legendary creature, Angel 2 2, Flying and Vigilance. Each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. You can tap, add white, so in this manner only to cast an angel spell. Jita, or Giada, is so much fun. I am making, or well, currently building, a mono white angel tribal deck with her as a commander. And I'm slowly piecing the other things that I want. I do have like Avacyn ready for it. 
couple of other of the really good white angels. They're still piecing it together, but it will have some stacks in as well. Kind of slowly them down for others as we establish our board state in mono white. It's kind of kind of slow there, but Giada really gives you the boost, the plus one plus one counters, and she has resistance. Probably my favorite, my second favorite card to come out for this year, behind the Wandering Emperor. Her story in Streets of Nicopena as well. She's one of the main characters, one of the main focal points of the set. I really enjoy um, the process of building the deck. And once I build the deck, I will have a deck profile out for it. I do plan on that being pretty soon, maybe within the next month or so, depending on how our summer goes here. Uh, next up, and last, I believe, is Titan of Industry. Four and three green for a seven, seven creature elemental, elemental with Breach and Trample. And when Titan of Industry enters the battlefield, you choose two. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Target player gains five life. Create a 4-4 green rhino creature token. Or put a shift counter on a creature you control. So, I just have this here because it is a big creature. A big, just stompy thing. It is a 7-7 with trample and reach. So, it can block the flyers. It can get through little things. It's a really fun card. Um, my two things that I do here, because you see a lot of artifact enchantments. So, for sure, the tar destroy target artifact or enchantment. Or if you're on life, you go for the life gain. But the two things I would always do here is the shield counter on a creature control and then the destroy target artifact or enchantment. See a bunch of artifacts and enchantments nowadays. Destroy that smothering tithe. Destroy that mystic remora. Destroy that. What's the other one? Uh, mystic remora and Ristic study. Destroy that soul ring that has them out ahead early. And then put a shield counter or something to make it indestructible. Simple as that. Uh, that, that was Nico Pena. Now on to my Baldur's Gate picks. Uh, this one's a little bit different. So here's some cards that I drafted. I really enjoyed drafting this set. And starting off with the card that I built my commander deck around for the draft is Rosa Rail Kingpin. So three blue black, very legendary creature, human rogue. It's a two five with death touch. When Rosa when Rosa Rail Kingpin enters the battlefield, you take the initiative, which is the dungeon mechanic in Baldur's Gate. And by the way, this is probably the best dungeon. It's a really fun one. And getting to the end of the dungeon is just so much fun. Getting to just tutor something out. Absolutely amazing. And then whenever you attack, target attacking creature against that touch to another turn. So you can choose itself. Choose another creature you have. This already has that touch. So you probably want to choose itself. Uh, if you complete a dungeon, that creature also gets plus 5 plus 0 and gains first strike and menace until end of turn. So you can get something death touch, first strike, menace, and plus five plus oh. Absolutely insanity. I think it's a really, really fun card. Expect to see a commander deck of mine built off of this card. Uh, next up, Wild Magic Surge for two red. An instant spell destroy target permanent opponent controls. So Chaos Orb for one less mana, because I believe Chaos is three. Uh, it's controller rules cards from top of the library until they reveal a permanent card that shares a card type with that permanent. Put that card into the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. So not only is the card not shuffled back into the library, but it gets destroyed. And then they they reveal until they reveal something of the same type. So it, even if it's something like trivial, like say they're in more than two colors, they're in three colors, and they're just skating by with only one one pip of a certain color say like one red in a three colored deck like, like in a mardu deck and you use this destroy that red and they have to go into they hit a land they hit a mountain or they don't they don't hit a mountain they hit either a plains or a swamp and then you kind of manage screw them so i think it's a very situational card very fun card i think you should be seeing this a lot in commander decks for sure uh next up cloak of the bat a two drop artifact equipment creature creature has flying and haste and equip two um, giving haste is great, and giving flying is even better. This is also in my commander deck with uh, Rosa Rail. So this came out first. Ro Rosa Rail came out. So five drop, equip this easily. Flying haste, death touch. Yeah, not getting through that. Uh, Seravok Deathbringer, three and a black, a legendary creature, human knight. At the beginning of each each player's end step, if no permanents left the battle for this turn, that player loses X life for X's Seravok's power and choose a background. So there's a background that makes 
commander creature control get plus 10 plus 10 there's a bunch of different backgrounds that can really help out a lot with this and you'd be surprised how many turns go by where things don't get destroyed especially if this is a four drop and you get it out pretty early at the end of each player's end step if no permanents left the battlefield this turn that player loses x life for x to Cerebox power so just pump up Cerebox, you get access to a second color with the background so you can make this kind of into anything you really want and you kind of just pump him up and hope that they don't destroy things or things in the battlefield and you kind of just keep dealing damage it's a really fun card very situation i played against it in draft and it was a lot of fun to play against uh next up um hadi emporium master one in racto so black red legend creature cat devil it's a three three at the beginning of your of your end step, creates a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. So great card for after a board wipe. Great card for after dealing like multiple instances of damage. Uh, great card for pretty much anything. You get this down, and you can create a bunch of treasures. You can throw this in Prosper, I feel like. Or you have black and red, so you have like damage and burn with red. And you have like spot removal with black and board wipes. Really fun card. Um, also saw this one in draft. Very fun to play against. Next up is John Irenicus Shattered One. Two. A blue and a black. Fray Legend Creature Elf Wizard. It's a 3 3. It's at the beginning of your end step. Target opponent gains control of up to one target creature control. Put two plus plus counters on it and tap it. It's goaded for the rest of the game and it gains this creature can be sacrificed. Whenever a creature you own but don't control attacks, you draw a card. So I've seen a lot of things with this card. Where they're saying put like, like deck eater or like level leader, something. I think it's pretty sure it's deck eater into your deck. Give it to them. Let them worry about it then. Or I, I, I see that a lot with like being town bullies as well, which is from Treats of Nuka Penna. Um, just giving stuff away, goading it. And then, when, and then since they have to attack because of gold, you just get the free card off of it. I think it's a very fun concept, and then your creatures can be sacked, and they can attack you. So, very fun. I think you can do a lot of fun things with this. This is one of my future two-build decks as well. And last but not least, the one heavyweight I pulled from my draft was Battle Angels of Tear. So, two and two white. Very 4-4 four, four angel knight creature with flying and myriad. So married is whenever a creature attacks for each other uh, defending player, token of the creature comes in and is tapping and attacking them. So the rest of it is whenever Battle Angels of Deal, Battle Angels of Tear deals with common actual player, draw a card that player has more cards in hand than, than each other player. Then you create a treasure token. That player controls more land than each other player. Then you gain three life if that player has more life than each other player. Which if you are the Player that's behind the game, you get this down. It's gonna hit each person. If it deals common damage, I mean, you're either drawing a card, you're creating a treasure, or you're gaining life. And in most instances, you're probably gonna do all of them. Very, very fun card. I really, this is going into my Angel Tribal deck for sure. And with that being said, I'm just gonna just lay everything out here. Some Just some cards to maybe, you know, pick up as the double masters hype starts to drive prices down and for other things uh, a lot of people are saying that this is not the best year for magic but i've really enjoyed it i've really enjoyed uh kamigawa Baldur's gate's been fun draft i don't think we have enough time with this set with these cards it's, that's what i think is happening not enough time in between uh sets so far so yeah these are 21 cards that i am thoroughly enjoying so far throughout this year in magic and they all came out this year so that being said if you see anything you like go pick it up most of the stuff is cheap outside of wandering effort that's like 80 bucks right now but the rest of it you can get for under 15 bucks pretty much every single card here uh tier battle range tier is maybe 10 bucks Jenga taxes is maybe 10 bucks. The rest of it, a buck or two here or there. So go pick them up if you like them. And with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with anyone who might like some magic content. 
Uh, more deck profiles are, are coming on the way as well. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.